Hello, welcome back. And uh, we're looking at another general aviation aircraft. Um, actually, we're looking at a combination of the default Lamina Research um, Cessna 172 with something that's called Reality Expansion Pack. That is basically an addition to a mod, basically, of the uh, standard Cessna that you can buy. It's a payware. And this thing is done by simcoders.com. They have created reality expansion packs for a number of uh, GA aircraft. And the idea is to make these particular aircraft more realistic. Now, there are a number of um, expansion packs. Um, let me see if I can find the list here. Ah, yeah, here you can see it. There's one for the default X-Plane 11 Cessna. There's one for the default X-Plane 11 Beach Baron 58. There's one for the Carinado Cessna uh, Centurion. One for the Beechcraft, also from Carinado, F-33A, the V-35B, and the Baron, the B-58. And then there are also two for the ASCG Piper Super Cup and the Machete. Um, and basically what these REPs do is they, they increase the realism factor by bringing in more realistic systems or um, physical parameters. Um, they also add sounds. There are some, some new sounds coming, um, like when you roll on the ground. Um, and they kind of also change a little bit the physics uh, to make the behavior of the aircraft that they extend more realistic. And they actually have started also something which is kind of a economic simulation. So you can basically um, do a local, that's not something on the internet, but you can do some kind of local economics uh, simulation as well with your aircraft. Uh, means the, the buying fuel and having costs for repairs and stuff like that. That's an option that you can turn on or off. Um, I have it off at the moment. I'm not going to look at the at this particular aspect. But um, yeah, it's a very interesting set. Um, I got mine uh, during the Christmas sales on the store here, uh, the x store. And therefore I got a good price. And I decided to get myself the reality expansion pack for the Lamina Cessna because I didn't want to uh, purchase another aircraft the Carnado aircraft uh, to do that. Uh, I do have uh, two of the older ones for the Beechcraft. Um, and I think they will also work in X-Plane 11, although the aircraft that they extend, the Carnado Beechcrafts, are for X-Plane 10. They have never been officially made X-Plane 11 compatible. They do work, I think. And together with the Reality Expansion Pack, they, they confirm that you can use them with the uh, X-Plane 10 compatible uh, Carnado planes. Anyway, today we're looking at the default Cessna that come with, uh, with X-Plane 11. Now, in order to get this installed, what you can do is uh, you go to your X-Plane 11 folder, you go to your aircraft folder, and you go to Lamina Research. There you see the Cessna 172 SP. Copy that whole thing the whole folder and bring it somewhere else. I have it here in this general aviation folder and I renamed it to Cessna 172 SP REP. So this way you can have your original if you want to fly without the REP um, and you can have the REP version of your, of your um, Cessna. And that's basically it. Um, yeah, well, and then when, after you made the copy, obviously you need to also install some files and they're mainly, see here, this is this plugins REP folder. That's the main one. And I'm not sure if they also add an F mod, uh, but they, they do um, bring in some files, mainly in the plugins folder. It's very simple. You just copy that stuff in, read the instructions, and then you're done. Basically, next time now you start the simulator and you start that particular aircraft, you need to watch out um, uh, which one you start by hovering over 
the aircraft symbol when you select it and make sure that you have the folder name with the REP in or whatever you called it. Okay, so that's it. I mean, if you really want, you can actually use the default Cessna in, in its default location. The problem with that is uh, when there's an update of X-Plane, it may actually override things. You may end up without uh, the, the REP. Okay, so that's that. Um, the manual is quite extensive. Here you see, by the way, this economy system I've been talking about. Okay, so um, if you turn it on, then from then on you kind of have to pay for things and, and you, you pay for fuel, you pay for repairing the aircraft and you kind of have uh, kind of a bank account. Um, it's an interesting thing, but as I say, I'm, I'm not going to use it enough for the try and fly because I just want to explore how the uh, default Cessna that I've been flying now with quite a bit uh, in, the, in, the, in the recent past, uh, how does it actually handle with the REP here. So let's get rid of that and let's call up the simulator. Now um, I have the default Cessna with the normal instruments that I use a lot um, but I thought that for the REP I'm going to use a more modern avionics suite and that's the um, the Garmin 1000 but uh, both versions the Garmin and the uh, the normal instruments version of your Lamina Cessna will be extended automatically. Um, when you start this for the first time, um, you will see this entry here, simcoders.com REP, and you will have only one entry. You need to activate it. You need to enter a, um, a code to activate it. And then you need to reload the plane. Actually, I reloaded the simulator because when you reload a plane after activation, usually things do not work fully in 100%. So if you want to make sure that, that it's really working, just stop the simulator, start it again. Go back to your aircraft like we are now, and then, um, and then you should be fine. Yeah, and once it's activated, you should be able to see, for example, the settings menu. Um, I've actually enabled plane damages. So I have to be really, really careful how I fly the aircraft now because I might actually break things if I'm overdoing it. There are some tips uh, that show up at the top, uh, a side menu. Um, so you see, and the nice thing is, uh, unlike the Carnado stuff, for example, where you have these obtrusive uh, AOC things here. I hate that for a video maker. That is... Uh, yeah, you don't really want to have that in your picture. Um, this is great because you can make it disappear um, and only when you go here you will see the, the menu. So that's great. Save and restore the plane status between sessions. It means that when I last sat in this aircraft uh, and then exited the simulator, it has actually stored everything. Um, so I left it cold and dark as you can see and it remembers that and it brings it back in the exact same position. And the other thing is that it has started now to count hours, uh, motor hours and, and use hours of use or something like that. So it's, it's all better explained in, in the manual. Now this is a try and fly. This is not, uh, I will tell you everything I know about this aircraft and the REP. We are going to explore um, what it is like, uh, but I will give you some overview of what you can do, okay? And then it's up to you if you if you like this, if you like what you see. Um, roll axis drives ground steering. I had a bit of a problem with the Cessna in general and steering. I'm not sure why that is. I tried several things, including axes and stuff. So I stopped doing this and I use this option now, which basically means if I use the yoke, um, it, I will I will steer with the yoke now. And that seemed to work okay, at least the last time I did it. And there's also this advanced steering and enhanced default stall behavior. So we better not stall, I suppose. Okay, so these are all the options that you can uh, select. And then you have also show the checklist, show weight and balance. Um, by the way, a lot of these things are here as well. Okay, 
So when you do che checklists, you actually do get a checklist here, uh, also with emergency procedures, and there is a reference page that gives you information about, for example, when the pressure altitude is 2,000 feet and you have uh, zero degrees, then the ground roll... Um, so that's, that's probably... So what exactly is that, actually? <laughs> Flaps 10, full throttle, okay, so it's for takeoff. Um, flaps 10, full throttle, prior to brake release, paved, level, dry runway. So lift off at 51 knots, indicated, 50 feet at 56 knots, indicated. So 50 feet, I suppose, is the initial vertical speed or something like that. I, I'm not sure, actually. Short field takeoff technique applied. Decrease distance by 10% for each nine knots of head. Uh -huh. Short field technique applied. Okay. Sounds pretty complicated, but it, it, I think it gives you the distance here of, uh, of ground roll that you will require, depending on the altitude also and on the temperature. Okay, then the normal pro operations, seatbelt, shoulder harness, you can go through this. This is not one of them uh, automated checklists. Um, I usually have another one. I, I s switched the X checklist uh, plug into the new version with all the colors and the fancy things. Unfortunately, all of my old C lists are not compatible with that. Um, and I forgot to actually take it out. So we don't have my normal X checklist for the Cessna. So I'm now going to use the sec checklist that comes here with this um, with the reali reality expansion pack. Show weight and balance. Here you can uh, select your weights, baggage. Um, you can also fill the tanks. We have uh, 52, I guess it's per, uh, liters, uh -huh, maximum 100. So we have about 100 liters. Um, oof, yeah. So that should that should be sufficient for our little tour that we do. Um, and here you can check that you are with your center of gravity and so on that you are in the correct in the correct uh, area. So you have to stay inside the blue area for things to be okay. So depending on how many passengers you put in, um, and no, there's no. There's no mannequins showing up in the aircraft, not <laughs> unlike the Aerobusk E1000. Um, it just sets the weights, okay? So 75 kilograms is a male, I suppose, standard male or standard grown-up. Um, and here you can also add some luggage. Since I'm on my own, I'm actually going to set this to zero. And you can see how um, takeoff and landing uh, C CG is actually changing here, okay, but we're still nicely in the blue and if I would put in, let's say, a full tank, well, we can do as well, let's fill this up, 100, 100, okay, now uh, it has moved up a little bit because we got um, heavier, so I fill the tanks and um, Flight time, no, no, it's not 60 minutes. The flight time is about 30 minutes. Cruise fuel flow, um, it seems to have 26 liters per hour. So uh, that will help you probably by to determine how much fuel you're most likely going to use. So I don't think that we are going to use um, much more than 13 liters. Okay. Let's do an apply so that all these changes have been applied. And uh, there is a walk around mode. Now, I'm only going to very quickly show you this because I had some issues with the walk around because um, then the views sometimes act up a little bit. But we'll try it anyway, but I don't really want to uh, do it now. Um, or oh, oh, maybe there are not that many stations. So we're inside the airplane at the moment. We magically jumped in there. Pilot's operation, operating handbook. And th that's now the thing, you see. Um, I can't move. 
um, anything in the cockpit. So this mode is um, strange a little bit when it comes to uh, manipulating your views. Um, next, yeah, we're still in the cockpit, so we're yeah we're going through this here: fuel on off volume, uh, fuel selector valve. Yeah, so it's on both. And the fuel selector down here um, should be in the on position. Static pressure alternate source valve off. And yeah, that's here. And, um, and trim controls neutral. Yeah, I think it is. It's a bit hard to see because uh, it is rather dark. I have my try and fly weather, which is not the best. Uh, next. So we're now outside, baggage door, it's uh, secure. Then, not that you can do anything with the mouse here, but you can check elevator, keep pressed. Oh, hang on, we are not in, I forgot. We are actually paused, that's why we don't see anything. Stupido mio, yeah, I forgot. Ah yeah, so here, now it works. <laughs> Next. Check rudder, keep pressed. Okay, so you can really go through this. This is actually working quite well today. I had some issues, as I said, but it seems to be okay today. So um, let's go through this, I like this actually. Uh, then we go to the tie downs and we make sure that they are not there. I have uh, toggled them anyway. Then comes the uh, emergency locator antenna here. And then comes the flaps on, oh, we, just press here and make sure that there is not too much uh, leeway. Uh, what's this here? Ah, that's the aileron. You test it uh, going through this once. So next. Um, wing tie down is gone. Then the fuel quantity. Okay, so we check it's 100 liters and water contamination is none. Uh, the chocks are already gone. That's the oil quantity. Uh, it's checked, so it is pretty full. Then comes the propeller and spinner. The, the covers, by the way, you can turn them on or off here. Okay, induction air and, ma uh, and heater air, you just make sure that these are all checked and free. Here comes the oil cooler air. That's supposedly, that's this one here and the nose wheel check tire and struts they they are green so they're fine there's no damage there here's the fuel on the other side 100 liters and no water and uh, probe temperature toggle p2 tube cover um, so it's cold and that's okay because we haven't we haven't actually turned things on um, in theory i would think that i should have probably turned on the heaters so that we can test them then comes the wing tie down, the landing and taxi lights check. Um, I think um, I can do this. This is now, it is a bit awkward now. Um, Whenever we say taxi lights, there it is. Okay, and what's the other one? Master switch on. Ah, okay. No, um, I think, okay. So now it's the the lights check, okay. So got that, got that. And we're back and we toggle the lights. So everything off again. Ah yeah, nice. Finish. So that was the, yeah, now everything is back to normal again. That's good. So that was that. Um, you can also tow the aircraft. So when you toggle the towing mode, I think you can, uh, how was that? Ah, yeah. You can use your aileron to start turning. Okay. So I'm not sure if we can, yeah, this is, um, visually I find this a little bit difficult, but so when I pull on the yoke, you can see how this whole thing starts moving okay and so while i keep holding it 
and then you can turn it also I do this with the yoke at the aileron and uh, yeah so and pushing it in will stop eventually use the pitch and roll axis of your joystick exactly so um, let's turn that off again so we're back in the cockpit then uh, we have a maintenance report that's here in uh, on this uh, several pages of it and um, there's a lot of stuff you can also change your oil here and uh, you can do ma basically do maintenance and you can go through this and just make sure that none of the items have any kind of problem okay and if you want to enable the economy system I told you before you can do that here I leave that off for this video yeah toggle the static elements that's all these um, pitot covers and and uh, chocks and all that so I had toggled them beforehand and you can disable the whole REP package now obviously we don't want to do that now and as I say here's this menu uh, that's the kneeboard again with the checklist then um, that's the thing for the weight and balance uh, the walk around we've just done the towing and that's the maintenance report and here's an automatic engine start so if you do not want to go through this checklist in um, then you could actually use this magic start um, and that will do everything for you I'm going to attempt now and see if I can start the aircraft normally seat belts and shoulder harness fastened brakes um, test and set um, it's a bit hard to see but I think here's the uh, I think now we have set the parking brake if I can see it brakes okay fuel selector is on both that's here then fuel selector fuel sh shadow valve is on it's in yeah so it's pushed in the beacon we turn the beacon on now does the beacon work actually without the battery I don't think so right no the beacon does not work without the battery so w we need to actually have some power in order to do to see the beacon so now we should see the beacon there it is okay okay next master switch on now it is on um, throttle open one quarter inch the mixture I have in the idle cutoff and when the engine is cold which assumedly it is auxiliary pump on the auxiliary pump by the way is here fuel pump okay so oops I got the wrong one wrong switch so we turn that on and then we bring the mixture in until rich and we should actually check the uh, where's the fuel GPH 3.9 yes and then we turn the pump off okay and then also cut off the maybe I've done this wrong now <laughs> We shall see. Propeller area is clear. Starter engage. That's down here. And start. Mm -hmm. We have flooded the engine. Fantastic. As soon as it starts and reduce the RPM. Yeah. I know. Now you know why you need the magic button. <laughs> that worked very nicely the first time around. Uh, today, obviously, when I do it on video, I mess up. So, let's see. 
Engine one is flooded by fuel. Set mixture for lean. Max throttle and crank the engine. Let's do that now. Okay. So we're bringing back now the RPM to about a thousand. And make sure that you lean the mixture. Don't have it too rich because otherwise you get fouling plugs. And basically now um, we have to wait also that the temperatures, oil temperature, and I have a feeling that there's something wrong here with this indication um, because that looked also very high the last time. So we're checking for the oil pressure and also the oil temperature to reach um, the green area. And in the case of the oil temperature, it has already gone over it. So let's turn on the avionics and the alternator. So after engine tart, ignition switch is in the both position. Yeah. The mixture is at rich. Uh huh. Put it then at rich. Engine 1000 RPM. Yeah, almost. Put it up a bit. All right. Then oil pressure check. The oil pressure is uh, now in the green. The temperatures, there's something wrong with the oil temperature. Mixture leaned max. So I'm, I'm bringing back the mixture until uh, we have a drop in RPM and then I bring it back again. So, looks okay. Flaps uh, is retracted. Um, the avionics is on and the instruments are set. Okay, um, what we need now is the weather. So I'm quickly checking the current weather, atmospheric conditions. So we have visibility of 20 miles. We have some light precipitation, it's 15 degrees, and we have a uh, relatively low pressure of 1000 or uh, 29.52. So we sh should set this here then. 29.52, you do this uh, here in the outer ring. And you set 29.52. Okay. And in theory you need to do this here as well. Oops. Okie dokie. Then the brakes. Uh, oh yeah, that's the taxi checklist. So, we're just going to fly um, one or two circuits here at this aircraft at this airport we're not going to fly uh, and navigate because that's not what we want to test so we're basically ready to taxi I'm actually going to start very quickly the my go flight so that I have some switches the hardware That takes a little moment. Um, we're not going to use the ILS, and the radio is one two two decimal eight, so that's fine. We can leave that. Okay, so turning on the taxi lights and I can see my hardware being back as well. That's good. So. 
um, because I want to use the hardware for changing heading and stuff like that. The heading here I think is 237 if I remember correctly and uh, when we start taxing now we're going to check very quickly the brakes. Uh, we just make sure that the magnetic compass is uh, uh, nicely in line with what we see and also if it moves correctly and the flight instruments so we just make sure that they are checked. So. Um, yeah. Alright. Off we go then. Parking brake off. And we're going to st start rolling a little bit. Now I'm checking the brakes. Yeah, it's working. taken the checklist out now and now oh yeah I need to steer with oh that is not working why well, ah now it's working okay yeah it takes a wee moment you can see that the magnetic compass is actually moving and it's moving yeah as expected We're going to take off from C probably, which is not that far up. Yeah, now as I say, there's something fishy here. I'm not sure if that came from the REP, but the oil temperature uh, indication I'm not sure what it's showing here and it's definitely I think it's either too high or the indication is wrong but um, as this is Fahrenheit 725 it, I, I don't know I, <laughs> I'm not I'm not that experienced with Fahrenheit I have Celsius but it kind of looks wrong to me yeah now you can hear some noises See, yeah, that's actually the, well, that is actually the, uh, yeah, this, <laughs> no, something is still wrong with the steering. I still have a problem with the steering. I'll try that again the advanced steering whatever that means but uh, it, it didn't work right now so I'm doing it again <laughs> okay there we go It's a bit odd with the uh, aileron. I'm instinctively trying to use the the, um, the pedals here, but uh, that that didn't work the, the last time. So that's why I use this this other mode. It's okay. Um, it just now happened that maybe because I I used both, maybe I used rather and yoke, possibly. Let's stop here for the moment and go to the before takeoff. So the before takeoff, the parking brakes, um, parking brakes are set, flight controls uh, free and correct. Yeah, that's a bit uh, stupid now we have it like that, hang on, ah, that's better. So parking brake um, is set, the flight controls are free and moving, free and correct. And we could also watch it from here. Okay, flight instruments are set, fuel selector is on both. Elevator trim is uh, here. Is it set for takeoff? No, it isn't go to bring it into the middle position here mm. 
Okay. Then mixture rich for run up. So I'm pushing in the, the mixture. And the autopilot check disconnect. It is disconnected. Okay, that with the rich thing um, causes now fouling, so I'm taking it out again. Whoop. Uh, throttle 118 RPM. Okay. Eighteen hundred RPM. Then now I'm putting in the mixture. Um, ammeter check. Where is that? <laughs> Fuel flow, EGT. Is that VAC? I think it is. I think we're fine here. Yeah, amps and so on. Then. Uh, engine instruments check well apart from this uh, thing here everything else looks okay then the suction check oh yeah where is that <laughs> uh, vacuum could that be that that could be the suction I think it's in green um, magnetos, so we're going to very quickly check that when we switch the magnetos and to the left we don't lo lose too much RPM, we're a bit high on the RPM Let's take this back again Let's go to the right Yeah it's okay. Throttle idle check. Radios are set. I'm going to lean again. Um, yeah, brakes release. Door windows closed. Flaps as required. Going to put at first position. And uh, mixture rich below 3000 feet for the takeoff. To take off then the lights on, transponder on, throttle full power, climb speed roughly 79 knots. And we will lift up at 51. Okay, then let's line up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that with the oh no that doesn't work well. Ah uh, yeah, the steering is steering is a, a constant source of joy in X-Plane. No matter what I have, it's always let's say problematic. <laughs> and I'm actually not sure that I like I like this here so I'm going to turn this off again this is, this this isn't this doesn't make sense okay I'll try it the classic way engine number one spark plugs are fouling raise the engine RPM oh yeah okay All right um, strobes Landing lights, taxi lights off, and <coughs> the transponder. Transponder, um, actually, we're in Germany, so I'm going to put in 7000 and then I'm putting it into alt mode. Right. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, the other thing I'm actually doing is I'm going to put QFE field elevation in here the pressure so that we have actually zero because I want to fly the circuit at 1000 feet above the ground and that's the easiest way 
uh, to get this done. Heading is in the right direction and we want to be at 1000. We want to fly the circuit at 1000, right? So full rich mixture and throttle full. Fifty. I'm pulling slightly on the yoke. That actually, <laughs> that is actually quite good. That worked quite well. I'm now trimming upward a bit. We have a slight wind, so, and I'm climbing with. I'm pitching now for about seventy something knots. What? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, look there. My checklist has come. Hmm. I think that's the checklist, yeah. So, now I'm turning. Weather is a bit shaky. Okay. And I'll continue c to climb to about 1,000 feet above the ground. That's the idea. Uh, it indeed reacts differently to the default Cessna. That I can tell already. So I need to trim down. I want to also get a bit faster. And we need to turn. You have to pull slightly on the yoke so that you don't start losing altitude. And I'm going to bring in the flaps. Do you have to? counteract the trim with trim because when you bring in the flap it will start descending because it loses uh, yeah it's not very fast so it's not as fast as uh, I thought that the lamina default Cessna would be so we're at about 90 knots, slightly outside the white area, and we're climbing. So I need to stabilize it now on in and around a thousand feet. I've leaned the mixture, by the way. Yeah, it, it reacts differently to the default, slightly different. Yeah, it's uh, it's nice. It's uh, it's not bad, but uh, it's different. I will reduce the speed now so that we get into the white area. And then we turn. And I'm bringing out the flap. First stage.
and you can hear some also noises wind noises and stuff like that it is partly different that's actually the expansion pack some of the the new sounds So the flaps really um, start lifting the aircraft again. So you need to counteract with trim immediately. Um, a little bit on the low side. Yeah, when you're not used uh, to a particular aircraft, then yeah, it is. You have to concentrate a lot and you do make mistakes. I did a couple of mistakes now. I flew too far and uh, descended too much right now. But that gets better when you, when you continue using it. But it actually feels quite good. It feels, it feels realistic. Um, it feels far more realistic and sounds also far more realistic than the original. The only thing... Um, and I'm not sure if it's REP or if it's just default <laughs> Cessna thing with the Garmin that here that that's wrong and I keep seeing it and I keep oh red <laughs> but uh, I know it nothing happens so it's it's not that that it will um, stop working or something like that and last stage trimming and we approach with about 60 knots I could have taken out the checklist now but that's the thing um, on a circuit like this I just simply don't have the time to pull out the checklist now read it and and so on so I think I've done everything we need Don't forget to trim. I think I'm going to stay a little bit on the right of the center line because we're getting pushed by the wind. So I'm using the runway now. Oh yeah. Actually, that was, yeah, that was good. That worked quite well. A hundred and something feet per minute is actually not too bad. And uh, we got the, the stall warning shortly before we touched the ground. Um, that felt really good. <laughs> I really like it. Okay. So let's very quickly check what that looked like in the replay mode. Okay, that's... Uh, Laps. Yeah, it's okay. All right, let's see. How bad it was. Oops. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. That worked actually quite well. Let's uh, see this from the other side. And it wasn't that difficult to actually do this. And if you know my channel and know me, landings like this aren't the norm. <laughs> They're actually more the exception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Very nice, I have to say. Really like it. Uh, I think we can stop this now. Okay. So let's taxi to the ramp. 
Um, I'm going to get the knee board and we just check if we have forgotten anything important <laughs> because we haven't worked through the checklist so the after landing checklist so it knows already that we are on the ground or what so before landing so seat belts they were not okay fuel selector was still on both um, engine gauges uh, we checked heading indicator was aligned the radios were set, autopilot was, so we didn't use it anyway. Mixture was rich, flaps were down, approach speed 65 to 75. So actually we've done all of that. And the after landing checks are lights, except beacon off. And uh, transponder, yeah, we need to actually turn the transponder off. Standby. And uh, the flaps, we bring them up. I've got the F5 key for that. And the trim to neutral. So neutral is the, yeah, it's the, the little triangle there. All right. So now let's taxi to our parking position. Where was that actually? Where did we come from? I think we came from here, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm using the rudder pedals now and sometimes I need to give it a touch of brakes, differential brakes. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, whoops, I'm going to stop here for the moment. All right, we're going to put on a parking brake, throttle idle, um, max ground check, why? Engine shut down. Throttle 1000 RPM. Uh, avionics electric equipment off. Yeah. So, and off. Mixture cut off. Alternate uh, ignition switch. And to the off, alternator off, and the ignition switch glare shield. Why, why, how, how would I do that? I wouldn't even know how to do that. Not sure. Um, hops and tech record, control lock, install. Um, turn off the battery actually, and the beacon. So uh, we don't have a control lock, I think, or not that I remember. Uh, control lock install tie downs and chocks. Yeah, these we can actually do. Mm, where was that? No, that that I guess we need to do up here. Um, no, actually, let's let's do the following. I'm using the the. Um, because I want to get the aircraft a bit better mm, parking brake yeah you need to obviously release the brake <laughs> okay the only thing is it's a bit difficult to uh, see exactly where you are um, because you cannot move the view but i think i'm fine i can also not uh, go left or right yeah oh no i can left left i can okay so it looks like looks like we're okay okay so i'm pushing again Yeah, 
it's a bit difficult to judge how far away we are now from the from the grass. Okay, parking brake on. Warning, you must disable the brakes. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I figured that already. <laughs> Toggle the tow mode. And now let's get out of the aircraft. Right. There we are. Back on the ground here in Friedrichshafen. And I have to say, the reality expansion pack gives the Cessna just a touch of uh, it feels more realistic it sounds more realistic and uh, yeah you need to actually be careful what you're doing um, you can damage your motor you can damage uh, other things if you're if you're abusing the, your machine you can do now um, also a maintenance report and it will remember it will remember things so that your aircraft is aging now with every time I start it it will age toggle static elements let's put them on okay and if you enable the economy mode then you also have to start paying for things all right I'm actually not sure what I started with brand new privately owned that's by the way another setting and uh, can't remember though what mine is. The check fuel at uh, airport will only work when you activate the economy mode, which I'm not going to do today, but uh, I leave it to you. Actually, one thing if you have more than one reality expansion pack, so if you, for example, have one for the B 58 and the Cessna, um, I think once you enable the economy mode, all these uh, economic things uh, are working interchangeably also for the other aircraft. That means that uh, you have a bank account and if you have two aircraft uh, that you run in economy mode, uh, yeah, it will come from the same account and it will, uh, so, so you have to invest sort of in, in both of your aircraft uh, and decide which one you take and what, what you do with each one and all that. That's as far as I read. It's quite interesting and I might actually possibly um, take some time, read maybe up a bit more about it and I could actually think of starting to use it and, and do a little little sort of um, a more realistic usage of uh, GA aircraft. In this case, this Cessna, this particular one. Right, that's it. Reality expansion pack for the Lamina Cessna 172. Hope that was helpful. Until next time.